Hey, it's Mike here, and today another vegan science roundup where we look at a bunch of vegan research that is recent, but probably doesn't need its own video, but you still wanna hear about, and we're doing about 10 studies today, ranging from gum health to, is there a vegan test that you can get a sample from somebody and tell if they're actually vegan? Looking at prostate cancer, some international stuff, some sustainability stuff, and on and on, let's just go. So let's start with this first one, which is a randomized control trial, higher quality study here, and they looked at the oxidative stress response after eating a meal, whether it was of meat or of vegan food. In this case, it was a vegan burger or a meat-based burger. And of course, oxidative stress is implicated in pretty much every single disease. It damages the body, it ages you on and on, so you wanna have less of it. Now, I don't know exactly what was in that vegan burger. It seems to be soy-based, but I don't know how it was prepared. So my assumption is it's not like the healthiest vegan meal in the world. That being said, here are the results anyway. The results show that a plant-based meal is efficient in ameliorating the postprandial, which is after meal, oxidative and dicarbonyl stress compared to a conventional energy and macronutrient matched meal, indicating the therapeutic potential of plant-based nutrition in improving the progression of complications in type two diabetes and obese patients. So yeah, they actually had three groups here, a control where they gave vegan and non-vegan, as well as people with type two diabetes and people living with obesity. And there were particular results for each group, but we're seeing that markers like glutathione or our body's natural antioxidant response was better in obese patients who ate that vegan burger and oxidized glutathione was better in type two diabetes patients after that vegan burger. So we're seeing some good things here. All right, let's move right along to the next one. Are you afraid that somebody who's maybe trying to sleep with you is just pretending to be vegan to get in your pants? Well, now we might be able to take a sample of their hair and test it and see if they're lying or not. You know, when they're sleeping, just snip some of their hair. Anyway, this study looked at some isotopes of nitrogen and carbon that they believed would be connected to diet. And the results were that Delta 15N differed between vegan, vegetarian, and omnivorous diets statistically significantly. The problem is they say for you to actually get some good results, you'd have to have at least 10 people. So you have to be in a polyamorous relationship with at least 10 lovers to get this right. Now this is more of like a population scale kind of thing, I guess. So it looks like we need to wait on science for the vegan test, but no, you already know if someone's vegan cause they'll tell you. Ooh anyway, let's move on to the next one, which is this study on prostate cancer and a plant-based diet index. I always wanna mention if a study is a preprint study, and in this case, it is, it is not peer reviewed yet, but it likely will be because it's from credible researchers from the Harvard School of Public Health. So we might as well look at it, it'll be interesting. And they did look at plant-based index. So we're talking about people who having a high plant-based index will include people that are vegan and people that are mostly plant-based or entirely like plant-based pretty much. So let's just see the results. They found nearly a 20% lower risk of fatal prostate cancer with a higher plant-based diet index. And most impressively, your chance of dying young or under 65 if you have a plant-based diet index that is high was close to just half as much or a 44% reduction, which is huge because you obviously want to survive cancer. Plant-based for the prostates. Anyway, let's move on to an international study on gum health. This one is from Lima, Peru on vegans versus non-vegans. And I will say, I have been a vegan in Lima like eight years ago. Even then it was pretty easy to be vegan. So it's cool to see that they're studying it here. I had to whip out my broken Spanish mixed with Google Translate to really get this one down. But yeah, it's not a huge study or anything, but interesting. And the results were that in terms of self-perceived gum health, so if they feel like they have good or bad gum health, the vegans just did so much better here. To be specific, 65% of vegans reported good gum health when only 36% of meat eaters said they had good gum health. So that is pretty notable. It is just worth mentioning here that, you know, vegans are often said to just be deteriorating in every single way all the time, whether it's gum health or all this stuff. But the point is, this is just a point against that constant justification that vegans are just like crumbling. You know, in terms of gum health, that doesn't appear to be the case from this sample. Anyway, onto the next. Really quick, it's funny to see that aquafaba that chickpea juice that can be whipped into like a meringue is finally hitting the peer reviewed literature. I saw multiple studies on PubMed about aquafaba, which is just cool. I still need to try it. I should try a video on it in my new kitchen, which I still need to show you guys. All right, now let's hit another couple pre-print studies. I don't know why there are so many right now, but they are interesting anyway. Here we have one out of Poland on lipids in women. 
They looked at vegetarians, vegans, and meat eaters, and the results were that the HDL levels were higher in vegans and vegetarians than omnivores, and LDL cholesterol levels were lower in the vegans than in both other diet groups. And that's nothing new here, but a lot of times when you see LDL get really low, HDL is like, I don't need to do all that work anymore, and then it goes down, but these were still higher, so cool. All right, next we have a preprint study that is on eating disorder and body image, and this one slices both ways for vegans, and I think it's just interesting psychologically. They start off by saying, quote, Veganism may serve as a socially acceptable means to restrict food intake and disguise pathological eating behaviors. I can't say I haven't seen it before, especially in people that tend to become ex-vegan pretty quickly. And I will say previous studies like this one found that vegans had lower rates of eating disorders, but in terms of this study, which asked about 100 people in each group on the internet what <laughs> they felt about things, and they say, quote, vegans displayed more pathological eating behaviors than omnivores, which was significantly predicted by cognitive restraint. Problem is it's preprint, so I can't access what they actually meant by pathological eating. Was it eating a salad two times a day was pathological or were there actual really bad habits that they had? I don't know. How much was the difference between groups? We also don't know, but on the positive side for vegans here, quote, however, body dissatisfaction levels were higher in omnivores than vegans. So vegans appear to be happier about their body than people that eat meat, maybe because they are more likely to be in the normal BMI range or because they're so busy hating everybody else for eating those poor animals that they have no hate left for themselves. It's all love. What I do actually think is really interesting here is that they're proposing that it might be somebody's ability to control their actions that can actually allow them to become vegan, but then that same sort of condition can lead to eating disorder behaviors. And I think there's some truth to that in the sense that people with no self-control just cannot go vegan. They're not gonna be giving up bacon and cow's ice cream when they're walking by it on the street or something. All right, moving on to the next, I always like to just even quickly jump to international studies. And here's one from Saudi Arabia. It apparently had a hard time finding vegans, but then when it did, the results for health were, quote, those who follow a vegan diet seem to have better health rating and lifestyle compared to the omnivores. And I will say this was convenient sampling, which is not good in terms of sampling bias because they were just like, we need to get as many vegans as possible, but that's the result they got. All right, next up we have a study which is asking, are vegan ice creams contaminated with dairy or cow proteins? And this was more from an allergy perspective, but I think it's interesting just to know from an ethics perspective, if you're accidentally eating cow proteins by just eating vegan ice cream. They looked at 32 different vegan ice creams and in three of them, they were able to find some trace amounts of dairy proteins. I don't really know if it was that much to make a difference or, you know, if you're just gonna like touch a surface in a restaurant, if it's gonna have some of those dairy proteins on it. If you lick the table at Cold Stone, you are no longer vegan. <laughs> Here's the part that I don't want people to get crazy and freaked out about, but it appears that, well, two of those ice creams have the processed in facilities that also process milk products. One of them did not have that label, so that one is just sketch. I don't know which one it is, so you're just gonna have to play Russian roulette with pints of vegan ice cream. No, I'm joking, and if you are allergic to this, they, they speculate a little bit about if there's enough to cause an allergic reaction, and they don't know. My guess is that it's probably really low levels. Anyway, next up we have this interesting study out of a Lancet journal, which is looking at climate-friendly diets and how much they cost. They look at a whole spectrum of like pescatarian, flexitarian, vegetarian, vegan, and they came up with some interesting answers because they looked at it across different countries that are high versus low income. They stratified the whole thing, and here are the results. Quote, variants of vegetarian and vegan dietary patterns were generally most affordable and pescatarian diets were least affordable. So I think all of that like expensive shaming that is put toward vegans and their diet should now officially be redirected toward them fish eaters. And it is true, I remember going into like every restaurant back when I used to eat various other animal parts and fish parts were always the most expensive, yet no one really ever mentions that. You no longer eat that when you're vegan anyway. Anyway, here's that chart based off the income levels of different countries from high to low, and the vegan diet is generally the cheapest improvement option when we're talking about diets for the environment, and so it looks like the baseline is cheaper than the other diets 
for low income countries. But as they say, if you're looking at other costs like healthcare and on and on, and who knows if that's even calorically sufficient, they say, quote, the healthy and sustainable dietary patterns were up to 25 to 29% lower in cost in low income to lower middle income countries and up to 37% lower in cost on average for the year 2050. Yeah, so vegan diet did really well here. And I would say this is at least a point against the notion that lower income countries shouldn't even try to be going vegan because clearly there's this benefit environmentally and so on. The next study I just wanna mention, I got like an email or two about it, was this one on mental health and vegans and vegetarians. Again, we've had some of these in the past. And in fact, those studies are used to create this one. Should I do a whole video on this? Either way, I'm just gonna say right now that it is funded by the beef industry, <laughs> the unrestricted support. And it also found a very small difference. It used a hedges value and that hedges value was only around 0.2, which is generally considered like unnoticeable. So that's not really showing much. And then also as the study even says, it can't show causation once again. So if you guys feel like it's being publicized and stuff and being thrown around, I could do a full response video. If not, that was the last study. Also wanna say, I think these videos are super interesting to do because I learn about a bunch of different topics and research these in more detail than I would have otherwise. And then of course you guys get to hear about them and I would have talked about them. So let me know what you think about all this. What do you think about the ice cream contamination and the vegan test and on and on. And that's it for today. Feel free to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.